Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Ancient Roman Military Camps Archaeologists have discovered a trio of ancient Roman camps that were lost in the Jordanian desert. It's believed these isolated camps were part of a secret military mission that went down in the 2nd century. The physical remains of the camps are long gone, but archaeologists use satellite images to find the scars the settlements left on the ground. The camps don't look like anything today, and there is nothing left but the rectangular outline of where the walls once stood. There are no buildings or ruins, and not so much as a stray brick can be found at the site. Scientists might find some artifacts, though, if they ever decide to excavate. But as of right now, the Roman camps are so deep in the desert, archaeologists haven't been able to physically visit them. Michael Fradley from the University of Oxford spotted all three Roman camps within 24 hours of searching the satellite images from Google Earth. The positioning of the camps suggests that they were military in nature. They were built following the standard Roman defensive plan, and the camps are hardly within a day's walk of each other, between 23 and 27 miles apart. If the Romans were under attack, they would have been able to retreat to one of their other camps as they regrouped and rallied a defense. In the 2nd century AD, the Romans didn't control this part of the desert. It was ruled by the Nabataeans, Roman allies who controlled the spice trade from their capital at Petra. Remember Petra? The Roman camps suggest a secret mission to infiltrate the region and launch a surprise attack. And in the end, the Romans did eventually conquer the Nabataeans. This may have been a precursor to the full invasion, a secret mission to destabilize the kingdom. And it was such a covert operation that there are no Roman records of it ever occurring. Any Roman military buffs out there? What do you think about this discovery? Number 9. Chittorgar Fort Chittorgar Fort is one of the biggest and most formidable ancient fortresses in India. The walls of the fortification stretch along the edge of a massive hilltop that stands 590 feet above the land below. The fort offers amazing views of the plains spreading outward from the valley, and it contains a whopping 65 historic structures. There are four different palaces here and over a dozen temples, and there are also artificial lakes and tall towers that were built to commemorate long-forgotten victories. It's not exactly clear when the fortress was built, but some have estimated there was a military structure here almost 2,000 years ago. Folk legend says the fortress was built by the legendary hero Bhima. What we do know, based on historical records, is that the fortress was captured by Bapa Rawal, the Guhila ruler, around 728 AD. The fort saw a lot of action through the ages and was conquered by Aladdin Khalji in 1303 with his great army. The siege lasted eight months, but finally, Aladdin and his men won. And afterward, the Guhila ruler supposedly ordered the massacre of 30,000 Hindus in the city. The fortress began to decline in 1616 with the peace treaty between the Mughals and the Rajputs, but it was built to last and still stands as one of the most impressive and powerful fortresses ever built. And now for number 8. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Ginny D and Leela Croesus and the Moon. Thanks so much for your nice comments. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family, because why not? Number 8. The Towers of Silence The Zoroastrian Towers of Silence in Iran were in use until about 40 years ago. For 3,000 long years, these towers were used by followers of the Zoroastrian religion as sacred pillars of decontamination. Up until four decades ago, corpses could be found at the tops of the towers. These human remains were then picked apart by desert vultures, and gradually, they turned into skeletons. It sounds brutal, but it's all part of Zoroastrian tradition. When a follower of the religion dies, their body is believed to be immediately susceptible to contamination by demons. To stop demons and evil spirits from sneaking into the body, the corpse must be purified on a tower known as a dakmas in the desert. These bodies are left until the bones are bleached and not a single strip of flesh remains. After that, the bones are placed inside an ossuary, where it's believed the deceased can finally rest at peace. Zoroastrianism continued in Iran, its birthplace, and in India until very recently. Although it's still practiced in small groups, the Towers of Silence are now forbidden. Since the 1970s, using dakmas has been illegal. 
Many Zoroastrian communities are now burying their bodies under concrete to try and stop the demons from infesting the corpses. The Towers of Silence are some of the few remaining dakmas that are still around today. There are no more bodies on the towers now, but they are still considered to be extremely powerful places. Number 7. Isca Augusta the Isca Augusta was founded 2,000 years ago in 74 AD by the governor of Britain, shortly after the invasion of Britain by the Romans, at a point when the invaders were still having a tough time subjugating the native tribes. You know how it goes. The governor, Sextus Julius Frontinus, commissioned the construction of a powerful military base to help put an end to the rebellious tribes in Wales. What started as a small military outpost grew to be one of the only three permanent fortresses in Britannia, back when it was a Roman province. It was the main headquarters of Augustus's Second Legion, which had been around since the Roman Republic. Augustus's Second Legion, also called Legio II Augusta in Latin, had fought valiantly across Europe. They campaigned across the Cantabrian Wars, fought against the Germanic tribes, and were chosen to help invade and conquer Britannia. The Isca Augusta was their home base. It covered 50 acres and was outlined by tall stone walls and support towers. From the base, legions marched into Wales and slowly but surely brought the population under their control. Sadly, the fortress is in ruins today. It remained in use until about 300 AD and then was abruptly demolished. Historians think it was the result of Electus's rebellion, when the usurper emperor tried to seize power from the Romans and attempted to take back Britannia. A handful of people lived in these structures until around 380 AD, but the Isca Augusta never saw the Roman military return. These days, it's mostly grown over with bright green grass so you kind of have to use your imagination. Number 6. The Prince's House Archaeologists in Japan recently excavated the proposed building site for a new apartment building, and during their excavation, they made an unexpected discovery. They found the remains of the home of an 8th century prince. The royal residence was located in the area of Heijo-kyo, the capital of Japan from 710 to 784 AD during the Nara period. Prince Toneri was born in 676 AD into the Japanese imperial family. He was the son of Emperor Tenmu and Empress Jito, although he never made it to the throne. His older sister would eventually become the empress, while Toneri took a more religious path. He became a huge patron of Buddhism and constructed temples all throughout the Nara region. He was also the man behind the famous Yakushi-ji Temple. To find the prince's house at a construction site is a stroke of serious luck. But this wasn't any ordinary house. It was a mighty imperial residence. Archaeologists found the remains of giant pillars used to support the immense ceilings of multiple buildings on the property. Toshihide Omi, the chief senior specialist with the Cultural Affairs Agency, says it looks as if the prince's residence was at the very center of the capital. It was a fortress situated in the middle of the city. Unfortunately, though, construction on the new apartment complex will continue, so the remains of the residential palace will be buried under a heap of concrete. Fairy tale over. Number 5. Greek Naval Base Archaeologists in Greece have discovered the remains of an ancient naval base on the island of Salamis. They found the presence of a military harbor, a place where one of the most epic military naval battles of antiquity was fought. The harbor is located in the Bay of Ambilaki. Two Greek universities joined forces in picking apart the harbor in search of archaeological remains. It was the first underwater reconnaissance that was initiated by institutions in Greece, and it turned up a lot of great stuff. They found structures, the remnants of defensive walls, and buildings from the 5th century BC. Some of the features can even be seen at low tide from the shore, so they weren't a huge surprise. But with all these archaeologists working together, they were able to paint a comprehensive picture of the ancient naval base. The experts say this was likely a closed military zone 2,500 years ago. It was protected by a massive wall that extended over 200 feet and was dotted with defensive towers. There were also breakwaters and launch areas for boats, which means the entire harbor was fortified and ready for defense. The archaeologists think this could have been the staging area for the battle between the Greek navy and King Xerxes' Persian fleet in 480 BC. Themistocles lured the Persians into the strait between Salamis and the Greek mainland, and 
had utterly annihilated them, and the defeat of Xerxes ushered in the Golden Age of Athens. Number 4. Bunrati Castle Bunrati Castle began as a Viking trading camp in 970. The structure still standing right now is the final form of the castle, the very last in a long series of castles to be built on the exact same spot. Following the Viking trading camp, Robert de Musegros built a defensive fortress here in 1250. It was primarily built of wood, with a wooden tower that offered an exceptional view of the surrounding countryside. Then, when his lands were later transferred to Thomas de Clare, the new owner tore down the old wooden castle and built a new one out of stone. The construction of the stone castle drew peasants to the area, and soon a town had established itself around the stronghold. The town of Bunrati grew, and around 1425, the McNamara clan built the third Bunrati castle. The fourth castle came 50 years later when the O'Briens took over and turned it into a true stronghold. They also cleared the area around the castle and transformed it into a beautiful garden. There were once said to be over 3,000 deer that lived peacefully within the confines of this garden. The castle is a fantastic example of Irish architecture. It still stands proudly with its three main floors and turrets intact, and the dungeon is still ready to accept prisoners. The Great Hall is located on the top floor, and it was once used to hold audience with the Earls of Thomond. The castle changed ownership frequently between the 15th century and now, and it was only restored to its former glory in 1945 by Lord Gort. Now it serves as a tourist attraction and as one of the finest and most exceptional castles in all of Ireland. What do you think? Do you want to visit this castle? Let me know in the comments below. Number 3. The Lost Fortlet From Ireland, let's go to Scotland. A lost Roman fortlet has been identified in rural Scotland. On the edge of the Antonine Wall, which once stood as a border fortification against the rebellious Scottish tribes, the Roman fortlet marked the edge of the Roman Empire 2,000 years ago. We already know the Romans invaded Britain, but what gets a lot less attention is the invasion of Scotland in 43 AD. The Romans conquered the area we now call England fairly easily. But when Emperor Claudius and his army tried to push into Scotland, they received unanticipated resistance. The Caledonians were especially fierce, so there really wasn't much the Romans could do because they had already reached their limits. The army then built the Antonine Wall in 142 AD after a century of little progress. This marked the edge of their empire and the edge of their influence, and it was the farthest the Roman Empire would ever expand in the West. All along the Antonine Wall were established primary forts and smaller fortlets. These were military bases where soldiers defended against any invasions by the Scots to the north. Most of these army strongholds are long gone, but it was only recently that researchers with Historic Environment Scotland were able to discover one of the ruined fortlets thanks to new advances in technology. They used high-tech gradiometry to uncover the location of the fort that they'd failed to find since the 1970s. It's nothing but an overgrown hill now, but it's still exciting to know where the fortlet originally stood. Number 2. The Giza Barracks Archaeologists have found the ruins of a military barracks in the shadow of the Great Pyramid of Giza. The remains of a bustling port and a barracks that once housed military troops or sailors were discovered. And all of this was located just a stone's throw away from the world's most famous ancient monument. It's believed that the barracks was in use during the construction of the pyramids 4,500 years ago. The modern city of Cairo pushes against the Giza Plateau today. But during antiquity, there was a town at the edge of the pyramids called Kenzkawis. Previous discoveries have already shown that it was likely a thriving port. Thousands of years ago, there was a lot more water here, and the pyramids were accessible by canals coming in from the Nile. Giza and the surrounding towns like Kenzkawis were part of the same major port for three generations under the reigns of pharaohs Khufu, Khafre, and Menkare. These were the pharaohs who each built one of the three great pyramids. Archaeologists found a series of long buildings that may have been used to house sailors or soldiers during the reign of these three legendary pharaohs. Each building is about 23 feet tall 
and 113 feet long. The troops or sailors held here likely went on voyages up the Nile to fight in wars. They may have even been stationed here to guard important people when they came to Giza. But in all honesty, nobody can say for sure. All we know is that there were hundreds of soldiers stationed here throughout the construction of all the pyramids in Egypt. Number 1. The Military in Armageddon Armageddon is a city in Israel. It's an ancient place, a biblical site where the final battle for humanity will supposedly take place. The Christian Bible claims the armies of the world will meet at Armageddon and the last battle will be fought at the end of times. The name itself, Armageddon, has become another word for the apocalypse. But you probably already knew that. Archaeologist Gottlieb Schumacher was the first to excavate the city in 1902. During his work, he uncovered the remains of an amphitheater. It was a circular depression in the earth, which he thought was an ordinary amphitheater, likely constructed by the Romans. But over 100 years later, in 2013, a team of researchers excavated the same circular depression and made a shocking revelation. They discovered the walls and foundations of what was once the administrative center for the 6th Ironclad Legion of Rome. It was a military amphitheater occupied by the Roman Republic after they'd conquered the Jews and turned Judea into their own personal province in 63 BC. But why would the Romans have an amphitheater for their military base? Researchers suggest it was because they were strange people in a strange land. The military amphitheater was way smaller than a civic amphitheater like the Colosseum. It was used for both training and fun. And because these soldiers were occupying a foreign land far from their own home, they needed a way to entertain themselves. They didn't speak the local language, so they played games and put on their own entertainment events to keep themselves busy. What do you think life was like for the average soldier? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.